Welcome back to the channel guys, lovely to see all of you again and welcome to anybody that's new. Before we carry on, make sure you like and hit the subscribe button and then press that bell just so you're notified of new videos when they come out. Let's get into the video. <laughs> Right then guys, so I'm giving you the six essential photography products that you're going to need if you want to either make it as a photographer, be a really successful amateur photographer, if you just want to be the best hobbyist photographer ever. Um, these six things are going to be the essential things that you will probably want to carry all the time with you in some shape or form when you're thinking about photography. Let's not beat around the bush, let's get straight into number one. And number one is probably the most obvious thing, yet gets passed up in a lot of videos. So number one, DSLRs, or just a good camera in general. It doesn't have to be a massive DSLR, a professional body or anything like that. You can get yourself a good hobby enthusiast camera, and it can also be a mirrorless um, point and shoot. Just get yourself something decent that you only use for photos. If you're thinking about doing more photography, just have a dedicated camera for that. Get yourself a good camera. And if you're gonna get yourself a good camera, you wanna get yourself a good lens to go with it as well. Um, so I'm holding a prime lens and I would always recommend starting off with a prime lens. You may get a kit lens with your camera when you buy it, but always get yourself a good solid prime as well. Um, they shoot a lot wider open apertures, which means that you can get those blurry backgrounds that you're always looking for and um, that you see in everyone else's pictures and you want to learn how to get it yourself um, and they also help you judge um, distances very quickly so because you can only have one focal length so you'll soon know what you can get in the frame from your eye not just by looking through the camera um, because you'll only be using that one focal length and then you'll soon learn better ways to compose your images by just doing that as well. Now that you've got your camera and you've got your lens, this one's two for one by the way, you're gonna need these two important things and these two both count as number three. Batteries Ugh. and memory cards. So number one, battery. Um, you're always going to get need to get yourself a spare battery. Sometimes you can buy a bundle where you get a spare battery with the camera. Um, third party batteries on Amazon and eBay etc. Easy to come by and they're not too bad. Um, they will last about 80% um, of the normal time a, a branded battery will last but you do want you do want to keep a spare battery fully charged at all times say you're spending a day out for to photographing and then you're thinking to yourself my battery's running a bit low i better save the picture taking because i don't want to miss that shot because my battery's dead don't want to think like that do you you want to just reach in your bag get your spare battery, whack it in the camera and just continue shooting. And that leads me on to the reason you're gonna need extra memory cards too. Um, you don't wanna fall into the same um, sort of scenario where you're like, oh, running out of memory on my memory card, can't take no more photos, so I'll be a bit more selective. The only way you're gonna to learn to get better photos is by just taking photos. So you don't wanna stop yourself from doing that. Get yourself one. I mean, I've got quite a few because obviously you just build them up over the years but get yourself another memory card. So if you do find yourself in that scenario too, where you're running out of memory, you just whack another one in and you can carry on shooting, carry on learning, carry on enjoying photography. And now this is the next step. Right, okay, so you've got your camera, you've got your lens, you've got your spare bits of battery, your spare, your spare memory card, you've got your spare battery, um, and you're holding it all around your neck in one of these things. Yep, yeah, these come with your camera, and these are the worst thing any manufacturer gives out. Yes, it's nice to have a nice branded camera strap, but you don't want to be telling the whole world that you've got an expensive camera, do you? Plus, when it's around your neck, cameras are quite heavy when they've got a good lens on them as well. So you're gonna have a lot of weight just bearing down on you and you'll just do that for the rest of the day, which is not a good thing. So I say, throw that away and get yourself something along the lines of this. Um, this is a black rapid strap, but you can get cheaper versions on Amazon and eBay again. And it's just an over the shoulder strap basically. So you would just pop it over your shoulder. 
and it just gives a nice bit of support here rather than around your neck and then your camera will just be on the side and then it's more so at the side of you as well so it's more easy to walk around with but get yourself a better strap that suits what you do. So that's the first four things. The fifth one is actually an optional thing, but I think it's something that everybody should get. Being someone that likes the studio and likes controlling the light and things like that, speed lights were the best thing that I invested my money in. Um, I actually got two at the time because I had the money to get to. Um, rather than one really powerful one, I bought two um, mid power ones basically. And they're great. They go on top of your camera, they give you a better angle of light onto your subject and they have a little diffusion flap in there as well so that you can get a bit of a softer light rather than the one that's already built into your camera. You can angle them, you can learn how to bounce light off walls and X, Y and Z. Um, they're great. Um, it's a really good tool to learning how to control light in your photography as well. So I do always recommend people get themselves speed lights and learn how to control the light in their photographs as well. You're also probably gonna to wanna to get yourself a tripod. So number five is a tripod. This one here is a Joby Gorilla Pod. Um, this is great for me. I've got three tripods. Um, so I have this, then I've got um, two Manfrotto ones as well, which are, they vary in size depending on what I'm doing and where I'm going, the weight that I want to carry with me. And that's another thing as well. So when you're getting yourself a tripod, think about how you want to use it. Because if you want to use it for small things where you want to pop it on a table maybe, or you want to stick it onto a tree and get interesting angles, you know, then get yourself something like this. If you're going to be doing landscape photography um, or something like architectural photography, something where you want to do like nice long shutter speeds, then get yourself something that's a bit more higher in price, um, a bit more sturdy, a bit more reliable. You don't want to go cheaping out on your tripod. Um, there are plenty of cheap tripods on the market, but what you'll find is you'll probably start replacing them sooner than you really want to. And it will just be a snowball effect of money, just rolling into cheap tripod after cheap tripod after cheap tripod. Say that three times really fast. I've had my two Manfrotto tripods for the past um, three to four years now and I've really got no reason to change them over. They do a great job. Um, spent the money on decent gear and it, it serves me a real good purpose as well. So I'm very happy and get yourself good tripods. And then finally you're going to need something to carry everything in. So you're going to need to get yourself a good bag as well. A good camera bag. Um, I'm showing you a shoulder bag at the moment and um, this is what I use daily to be honest. This is what I carry this gear in that I'm showing you right now. A nice good shoulder bag is ideal. Something not flashy or branded. This is something that you would have if you were doing a lot of like street photography or your gear was a very light setup, um, similar to what I carry around with me most of the time. You can fit a couple of lenses in there and you can fit a body in there. Um, but essentially, that right there is the six things that are real essential to a photographer's lifestyle. Um, they're not gadgets or add-ons or anything like that. There's six essential bits of gear that you're gonna need throughout your photography career. You're gonna replace them over time, you're gonna upgrade them over time, you're gonna lose some of them over time, but you're always gonna need them. And it's a really important thing to know that those six things are the six key elements of your photography. So make sure you don't cheap out on them. Get yourself some quality and make sure that you're giving yourself the best chance at your photography. So there you go. Those are the six essential bits of photography kit that I think that every photographer needs, no matter what their level of experience. So if you think I've missed anything off or you think there's something that's more important on that list that I should have put in there rather than these items, please let me know, um, leave a comment below. Don't forget again, hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon just so you're notified of future videos. See ya.